Good morning, space flight enthusiasts. I've got a quick update for you folks. I'm sure you're probably aware that we've got the fifth flight of Starship coming up, although I still haven't received a notification from the FAA that a license has been issued. I guess hopefully that's coming today. But in the meantime, environmental organizations in the Boca Chica region are again doing everything they can to try to halt this launch. And their most recent attack regards the use of the deluge system, something that has been stirring up so much controversy and the varying opinions on all of this is so extreme that it's really difficult to tell what the truth might be. So first, here's what SpaceX has to say about their deluge system and all of the controversy surrounding it right now. Quote, the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, or TCEQ, conducted a technical review of Starship's water-cooled flame deflector, which uses potable drinking water and determined that its use does not pose risk to the environment as we have detailed at great length in the past. We have expressed permission from TCEQ to run the system now under the conditions of the consent order and a closeout letter from the EPA on its administrative order. Save RGV acknowledged that they are aware of these straightforward facts and still filed an unwarranted and frivolous lawsuit. Okay, just a couple of quick comments about this again they keep talking about potable drinking water that doesn't matter when you're talking about the operation of rocket engines and a deluge system rocket engines can definitely contaminate drinking water before it gets an opportunity to leave the pad during a launch and that theoretically could be problematic even though obviously since the tceq is allowing them to proceed it isn't that big of a problem or spacex is found a way to contain or limit how much of this water gets discharged into the environment. And in spite of all of my efforts, I really haven't been able to find any unbiased information as to why SpaceX got fined for this in the first place. Because even if this deluge system presents no threat to the environment at all, completely harmless, they say they're doing everything in accordance to what the TCEQ wanted them to do, etc., they've still been fined $100 fifty thousand dollars for violations this happened in september so here's what one of the local news agencies in the region said but keep in mind this is kuow the local npr network and yeah they are ridiculously biased as well but what they're claiming is that they have obtained information in some cases through freedom of information act requests that spacex has repeatedly disregarded environmental regulations in the region while they've been carrying out these launches of Starship and so that's why they've been fined by the TCEQ and that's why they're getting sued by Save RGV, a local environmental organization. Also, some of the experts that NPR contacted agree with me when it comes to the whole drinking water thing. They also confirmed that drinking water can be contaminated by the operation of rocket engines while it's being used on a deluge system and this is potentially the problem. Again, I don't know what sort of impact methalox engines could have on a deluge system's water, as opposed to things like solid rocket boosters used by the space shuttle. But Courtney Gardner, an assistant professor of environmental engineering at the University of Texas at Austin, had this to say, quote, I would not feel comfortable drinking it as drinking water, and I would not recommend that anybody else would drink it either. By the way, my daughter is doing her post-grad work at the University of Texas in Austin, really likes it there. But all of that having been said, it is absolutely crucial that this deluge system be used on each and every launch. And that was extremely obvious during the first launch of this rocket, which is not something that you're watching right now, but you've seen it probably enough times to know exactly what happened. And through a Freedom of Information Act request, KUOW got more more information about things that happened, including the destruction of the pad's restrooms, apparently, during the first launch in April of 2023. Quote, the shockwave blast created by engine ignition and takeoff destroyed the pad restroom. The building has been leveled and the system is non-existent, SpaceX wrote Texas environmental regulators in an email shortly after the launch that was obtained by NPR through a Freedom of Information request. Again, 
lots of things were destroyed during this launch, so it shouldn't be all that surprising, but it does indicate that SpaceX didn't do themselves any favors by trying to lift off before they had a deluge system in place, and I still think it's problematic that they don't have a flame trench of some kind. I think that did a lot of needless damage, which gave ammunition to these environmental organizations for them to use during their current lawsuits. And there's another problem with not having a flame trench. Flame trench can also serve as a way to contain water from the deluge system. At Wallops, for example, the water is sprayed under the rocket just above the trench. It either evaporates or is blasted downward along the flame trench and into a concrete basin where it is allowed to cool. And while it's held in that basin, it's tested for suspended solids, contaminants, and pH level in order to comply with environmental standards. Only after it's tested is it allowed to flow into a network of retention ponds before eventually being released into the environment. The entire process is dictated by a special wastewater permit issued by the state of Virginia. Kennedy Space Center follows a similar procedure and also has a permit to discharge its deluge water. Currently, at least according to the reports I'm reading, SpaceX is operating under sort of a temporary permit while they come up with a better long-term plan for containing the wastewater. And herein lies the big part of the problem. The crux of the matter is to why SpaceX got fined in the first place and why a lawsuit is currently being filed by Save RGV and why they might stand a chance of stopping it if a judge decides to issue some sort of injunction. But here's the deal. In March of 2024, March 13th actually, SpaceX received a letter from the EPA. It was a formal administrative order and in it, the EPA told SpaceX that its water deluge system was in violation of the Clean Water Act. Quote, violations were identified during a review, the letter read. The violations alleged are for discharges to the waters of the United States without a permit, unquote. The EPA then gave SpaceX 30 days to develop a plan to mitigate the water discharges and submit a permit to Texas regulators. But the EPA didn't have the authority to stop the launch. That was up to the FAA, which issued the launch license. But the FAA claims that neither SpaceX nor the EPA told them about the violations. So the agency had cleared the launch and the next day, the company fired the engines on Starship and discharged tens of thousands of gallons of water into the wetlands without a permit. And then on April 4th, SpaceX sent a letter to the EPA claiming that the discharge system was covered under a general permit issued by Texas regulators, but the EPA rejected that claim. Quote, discharges from the water deluge system operations during rocket launching activities do not appear to be covered under the permit, unquote. Now, since I don't trust NPR to provide the entire story when it comes to these types of letters, I went ahead and downloaded the letter myself, and I'm going to go ahead and read it to you in its entirety. Well, I'll exclude some of the administrative nonsense. Thank you for your April 4th, 2024 letter responding to administrative order document number blah 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 for unauthorized discharges at the SpaceX launch pad in Boca Chica, Texas. Your response letter states that SpaceX activities and facilities at issue are covered under the Texas Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Multi-Sector General Permit transportation equipment, industrial or commercial machinery manufacturing facilities. Additionally, it is stated SpaceX prepared and implemented a detailed stormwater pollution prevention plan, which includes numerous best management practices to control discharges, including construction of retention basins, installation of protective curbing, plugging of outfalls during operations, and use of only potable water that does not come into contact with industrial processes. Once again, Potable water that does not come into contact with industrial processes, that's simply impossible. When the engines go off, the discharge from the engines come into direct contact with the water. I'm sorry, that one little point continues to annoy me. Anyway, let's keep going. The EPA acknowledges SpaceX has coverage under MG, MSGP, rather number, blah, 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 for stormwater discharges. However, discharges from the water deluge system operations during rocket launching activities do not appear to be covered. The wastewater from the deluge system is categorized as a type of industrial 
still process wastewater that is not covered under MSGP stormwater permit, etc. The industrial process wastewater requires an additional permit for discharge authorization. Therefore, it is the EPA's position that the unauthorized discharges cited are correctly identified. The EPA is committed to ensuring compliance with the requirements of the CWA and National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System Program, and my staff will assist you in any way possible. EPA welcomes the opportunity to discuss the information contained within. So despite the fact that SpaceX had been informed in both March and April that its launches were in violation of the Clean Water Act, SpaceX launched again in June. Now, once again, I find this almost incomprehensible. Why did the FAA not stop the launch if there was such a clear violation taking place? In my opinion, it probably wasn't all that egregious of a violation. Instead, it was something that was probably going to be fined. SpaceX is willing to pay the fine while they were coming up with a better plan to deal with this wastewater, which again may not be as damaging as everybody says it is, but there's all kinds of conflicting information as to what's actually in the water, and I'm not going to get into that argument again. So anyway, SpaceX applied for a discharge permit in early July of 2024, and they described it this way, quote, Despite our previous permitting, which was done in coordination with TCEQ, and our operation having little to nothing in common with industrial waste discharges covered by individual permits, and by the way, I do agree with that. I think the amount of wastewater that is created by this deluge system and the impact that it has on the wetlands is insignificant significant compared to the amount of damage that wastewater might create in a full-fledged construction site, an ongoing industrial operation. It's a very different thing, but nevertheless, according to the EPA, they didn't have the appropriate permit, but they said we applied for an individual permit in late July. So even SpaceX acknowledges that they did not have the appropriate permits while they carried out these two launches, and as of right now, they still don't. Instead, while what they have is temporary dispensation from the EPA and the TCEQ to launch while they're coming up with a better plan and while they're waiting to get this permit approved, which by the way is likely to happen sometime in the near future. But again, Save RGV is using this situation as an opportunity to demand that number one, SpaceX pay additional penalties of up to $56,460 per day per violation against the company and also to get an injunction from the judge to stop the launch until SpaceX actually has a legitimate permit and a plan to deal with the wastewater. Again, this is not something that the TCEQ is requiring, nor the EPA. In my opinion, I don't think these agencies regard the situation as being serious enough to stop the launch. But then again, that's for the court to decide, so we'll see what ends up happening. I will make sure to keep you folks up to date on all all the new developments. Hopefully on Sunday, we'll be seeing a launch transpiring. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Please consider supporting this channel on Patreon and PayPal because I am leaving for Milan and this very important convention today. If it's something you'd like to support, all the details in the description. Thanks again, and as always, stay angry about space.